Hello friends, how are we doing? <laughs> Today we're gonna be seeing how many of my 2023 TBR I have actually read. Yeah. <laughs> I know we're all very excited for this. You guys seem to love these videos where I react to past TBRs that I've made. God knows why. <laughs> Don't, it's not very fair. I've had it. Enough. You know what they You guys keep making me make these videos reacting to what I've have I read these books when we could just I could make the TBRs and then we could just exist in peacefulness and uh, you know just not knowing you know we could be oblivious but um you guys really like the videos where I react to seeing how much I've read so I'm gonna do it we're gonna be reacting to the 23 books I said I had to read in 2023 listen I always say at the beginning of these TBRs oh I'm gonna read all these books I'm sure I said that at the start of this video I am making this list this year with like a determined that I'm going to read all these books, I promise. But to be honest, when I get to this point, like a year on from making the TBR, my goal is usually to have read at least half, right? If I've read at least half, uh, you know, life happens, shit happens, new books come out, it is what it is. I am feeling pretty positive about this list, actually. So Let me... Sometimes I go into these feeling really not good. Like, I'm pretty sure my 24 books I got read before I turned 24, which is at the end of January. Um, I don't think that list has gone very well from what I can remember. But from what I can remember on this list, I feel like I've read a lot of the books on it. So shall we just get into it? See how many of my 2023 TBR. I'm, I think I'll have read at least half this one. <laughs> Watch me have read seven. <laughs> Because I can just remember seven that I've read and none of the rest are on there, but we shall see. Okay, the first category is by far our biggest one, and that is 2023 releases. Okay. So I was thinking strategically. That's good, because I, yeah. I want to read more 20. I think I'll keep that strategy this year. Read new releases in a year. That's something I really want to focus on. This is some of the new releases that I am most excited for. So two, I already have my grabby little paws on. <laughs> the first is The Mysterious Case of the <gasps> Alperton Angels by Janice Hallett. I am so excited. I read it. I read The Mysterious Case of the Alperton Angels by Janice Hallett. I, that was one of the first books I read this year. I read that in January. It was five stars, Janice Hallett. My girly. <laughs> yeah, I loved The Mysterious Case of the Alperton Angels. It's all mixed media and it's about this baby who went missing from this cult where there was like a mass death in this cult and I really enjoyed it. I think Janice Hallett's books are so much fun. So yeah, that was one. I took that off early in the year. Megan, I think this this strategy of having uh, picked 2023 releases is really going to pay off. And then I also had to put on the list Hellbent by Lou Bardugo. I am so jealous yeah. of everyone who is reading this. <laughs> oh, well Megan, it took you a fucking long time to read it. I think I read that, was that my 100th book of the year? Hellbent? <laughs> it took you a while. God, I didn't realise I had that at the start of the year. <gasps> I enjoyed Hellbent. I didn't love it as much as Ninth House. Hellbent was like a four star for me, but I did enjoy it and I do like this series a lot. I'm sad it's only gonna be a trilogy. Oh guys, Ninth House, the series was supposed to be like a seven book series and then she changed it to a trilogy and I'm, I've never, I've never gotten rid of that grudge. It's a, it's a grudge that's lingering. <laughs> I'm not one of those people that forgive and forget. I'm one of those people that fucking take score. My dad, it's like one of his favorite books of the year. He says it's like a five star plus to him. So whenever we talk about it, he gets really upset with me that I <laughs> did not give it a five star. It's, a, it's an ongoing grudge in our relationship. Um, so he loves it and he, he's a big fantasy reader. So that's high praise coming from him. How long can we go with me having read every book. So number three is Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. So excited. <laughs> I'm a genius. Megan, you did well with this list. Oh my God, yes, I've read Yellow Face. <gasps> what if we got, what if I read them all? <laughs> I don't think I've read them all. But like, what if I read them all? <laughs> Just gotta try and have a PMA. The folks at PMA. Positive mental attitude. Get fucked. I have read Yellow Face. I, again, this was like a strong four star for me. I really, really enjoyed it. Arif Kwong just has a way with writing. And you know, this was obviously her first non-fantasy. And it's just very interesting seeing how her writing style changes, but also stays the same across different genres. And I think one of her next books is kind of a fantasy romance kind of deal. I'm not sure if that's the next one. I don't know. I know she's got one coming out where it's like academic rivals who love each other, who like, it's a romance between go to hell to save their professor or something. Arif Kwong, you're mine. <laughs> also, we've out of the three, we've had two Goodreads winners. Yes, I'm still thinking about Goodreads winners. Don't talk to me. I knew what were going to be the most hyped releases of 2023 from this moment. <laughs> 
Number four is Lost in the Moment and Found by Shauna McGuire. This is the next in the Wayward Children series. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I actually don't know how to react. I don't think this has ever happened. <laughs> oh my God, I have read Lost in the Moment and Found and I loved it, another five star, oh my God. Not only were these the books, my 2023 TBR, like these are always books I'm most excited to read. We've had two four stars and two five stars. It's almost like I actually know my reading taste when I like make myself sit down and think about it. And some of the like three star, average three stars I read are like what I think I should read. But when I sit down and think like what are the books I'm most excited to read? If I can only read 10 books this year, I know it. I know it, I know it. Um, I loved Lost in the Moment and Found by Sean McGuire. This is the next in the Wayward Children series, as you guys know. This one, it does come with some heavy warnings. There's a trigger warning and an author's note at the beginning to do with child abuse. But I thought the kind of world that we find ourselves in in this installment is very interesting because it kind of expands on the magic of the series and grows the series a bit. And I do love when a series, obviously this is like the ninth in the series or something, eighth, I don't even know, seventh, tenth. <laughs> I don't know how far in the series we are. But you know, we're quite far into the series, but I do love when whenever a series grows and the magic grows and like everything becomes a bit bigger. And I don't like that to be rushed, but I like, my favorite example is the Bear and the Nightingale series by Catherine Arden. Every edition in that series grows the world and the magic a little bit. Oh my God, guys, I fucking read it. I can't. I can't. We also have In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. So can I just say another Goodreads winner and I've read it. <laughs> I am the moment, bitch. I oh. am the moment. Oh I'm always the moment. Now, I gave this a three star. And for me with DJ Clune, that is like big disappointment, right? That's the same as me giving some authors a one or a two in terms of like how disappointed I am. <laughs> Because I this one just didn't really do it for me. I just didn't connect to the story. Like TJ Clune's books, I think, because they're quite heavy on the like emotional messaging, right? If you just don't connect to it and you don't buy into that, I think it can be tricky. And I've just always bought into that with him, but I did not, I did not for this one. I did, I thought it was kind of boring. Also in my mind, this is a Wizard of Oz retelling. This is a Wizard of Oz retelling. Like it's very Wizard of Oz. And no one ever talks about that and no one mentions it, but it's Wizard of Oz. It's so Wizard of Oz, it's actually painful. Like, <laughs> what are we doing here? It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. Does anyone else agree with me? Anyways, but we've read them. What if I read all these books? You've already read five. How many do you need to read to get half? Like 12 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> that is not correct. Are we gonna get there? We're already five read. I wonder what the first book is gonna be that I haven't read. We also have Love Theoretically by Ali oh. Hazelwood. Okay, I spoke too soon. I have not read Love Theoretically yet. Here she is, let's get her out. Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. I own it, but I have not read it. <laughs> and I don't really know why. I mean, I love Ali Hazelwood. We know this, she's my romance girly. She's one of my few trusted romance girlies because to me, I just die the vibe with you or I don't when it comes to romance and I give her literally always five stars. I don't know what this one's about. Don't ask me to pitch it. It's women in STEM falling in love and getting, getting it on <laughs> with some tall guys. Some tiny women in STEM. <laughs> Actually no, I think this woman is described as aggressively medium. So Ali said, listen, the tiny woman critiques that over. Don't you see she's medium. <laughs> But yes, I have been meaning to get around to this. I don't know when I will, but I definitely need to get around to it soon because Ali's pumping these books out. We got Check and Mate, the YA, which already has come out. We got Bride coming out early next year, which is like the paranormal, which I need to read. And then we got another adult romance coming out in the summer. Ali, uh, pump the brakes a bit. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. I'm fashion, I'm style. And if they can't keep up, then that's their problem. Bye, Bye. take Thanks. care. But no, I have not read Love Theoretically yet. Okay. It's the first painful one of the, of the video. We have The Last oh. Word by Taylor Adams, which I am, you know, he wrote. Shoot, okay, I'm really excited for The Last Word, but I have not read it. This is one of the books in my defense. I was basically saving any books I was really excited for that I thought might be nominated for Goodreads Choice Awards for that video. And this is one, it didn't even get nominated, which is a freaking outrage. Ugh. <laughs> get some of those books out of here. Get Freedom McFadden. I just don't, Freedom McFadden didn't need to. She didn't need to, I know she won, but like get out of here. <laughs> yeah, so I was hoping this would be nominated and it wasn't. So I was saving it for that. I, I'm so excited. I have heard mixed things. I know some people really love this and some people have not enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna fall on the side of loving it because I love, I think a lot of the tropes and the fun of this. Ted Adams, oh. No Exit, I stand by this, No Exit is one of the greatest thrillers ever written. I think it is emblematic of the perfect thriller. It should be taught in schools. It's great American literature. 
It is brilliant American literature. And I don't care what anybody, it is. It's lit, it should be taught in schools. Generally, I think like on writing courses, it should be like the example of like, this is a perfect genre thriller, like, like fast paced, crazy. Like, oh my God, that book. Once you read it, you'll never recover. But we haven't read it. Oh no, we've had two I haven't read. Ah! It's okay, we're still doing well, we're still doing well. The same with my last 2023 release okay. on the list, which is The Writing <gasps> Retreat by Julia Bartz. This is a debut. Oh, she's only gone and read it. And all of you who hate it was so wrong. <laughs> This is my Catherine House of this year. Listen, this is gonna be in my best books of 2023 list. And I know that will upset some of you and you can just live with it. Life's not fair. <laughs> What's fair? Right. Life's not fair. Because the writing retreat, oh, I loved it. For those of you who don't know, it's about these women who go on this writing retreat with this like world famous author. And it's a little bit weird, a little bit, everything's going wrong, that's snowed in. It's also like about female relationships. I loved it. I loved it. I think it's genius. And although you don't see it's genius, wow. <laughs> I love the writing retreat. I think it's absolutely incredible. It's a travesty that it had too low an average rating to be nominated for Goodreads Mystery Seller because I just think everyone should read it. I just don't understand why you guys don't like it. It's amazing. It's so good. The writing retreat was so good. It was so fun. It, I always pitch it as Catherine House meets Bunny. I think if you enjoyed either of those books with their weirdness, with the kind of unsettlingness, with the female relationships, um, with the kind of cult-like atmosphere somewhat, I, I think that's the perfect pitch. I'm quite proud of myself for making that pitch because it's so right. Okay, we're done with the 2023 releases now. What's our next theme? That is the end of the 2023 releases on this list. Now let's get into the 2022 releases. There's a few that I really want to get around to that I didn't know I'd made a category for 2022 releases. I think actually 2022 is my most popular release year that I've read this year to be fair I've been catching up that's what I always seem to do and then it's 2023 I've read quite a lot of 2023 releases but I think 2022 just snuck over it so our luck statistically should be here the first of which is the <gasps> daughter of Dr Moreau by Silvia Moreno Garcia I know I'm gonna be reading this this year I have a plan for a video god I didn't do that video till like October fucking hell Megan that took a while no I have read the daughter of Dr Moreau and wasn't my favorite Silvia Moreno Garcia I loved Mexican Gothic right I think I gave that a 5 or a 4.5 but then and the other two Silver Moreno Garcias I've read, I haven't loved. They've both been about a three star. And that makes me nervous. I don't know where me and Sylvia stand. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know how we're doing. I don't know how we're doing. Yeah, I didn't love this. I, I think it was okay. I was just a bit bored. And listen, it's themed off of the story that one of my favorite books ever is themed off of, The Island of Dr. Moreau. We've got, listen, I read it because it was like similar, book similar to Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter, which I'm gonna be rereading, hopefully, the second and third books at the end of this year, if I have it in me. <laughs> I wanna reread those two, and I wanna reread Murder on the Orient Express at the end of this year, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't know if I'm being realistic, but I did not love. I thought, I just said the video was gonna come out around March time. I didn't do it till October, Jesus. <laughs> I just come up with other vlog ideas throughout the year that I'm more excited to do. And then so some, some vlog plans just get pushed back and pushed back, you know? Also on the list is Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher. Okay, okay, that's interesting. I am gonna mark that as red because I'm currently reading it and I've got 30 pages left. So I'm gonna finish it in like an hour. <laughs> I'm marking that as red. And by the time this video comes out, the video where I'm reading that will already be out. So it, I've read it. I've read Nice and Bone. Can't give you my full thoughts on it yet, but I'm enjoying it. I think it's gonna end up being a four star. You'll have seen the vlog, maybe, if you watch the vlog. I'm really enjoying it. It's just not, you know, me and T King Fisher, I've given her like two, by now, I'm assuming this is a four star, two fours and one 4.5, and I'm just waiting for a five. We've got it in us. I feel the pull, I feel the energy. We just need to like, hit at the right moment. You may say I'm a dreamer. Which was Our Wives Under oh, the Sea by this. Julia Armfield. I've read Our Wives Under the Sea. I enjoyed this. I've read it. Let me mark it down. God, we're doing so well, guys. I've read nine and haven't read two. What? What? Um, I think it's gonna go wrong. <laughs> I don't feel like this can continue. I just, I, let's appreciate this moment because I just feel like it's gonna go wrong. Um, Our Wives Under the Sea, I enjoyed. It's very weird. It's about these wives and one of them has returned from this deep sea mission and hasn't been the same ever since. And like, this is the kind of book don't go into if you want a plot, don't go in, into if you want explanations for things, just go into for pure vibes and you'll be fine. But like, go into it with the right expectations. But I'm interested in reading more Julie Armford in the future. The first is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I've only gone and read The Last Housewife. We've read 10. 
again. We were all so happy that day. It's, it's actually hard to even imagine how terrible things would soon become. The Last Housewife was another one that was a little bit disappointing for me. I think I gave it a three, but it's maybe more of like a 2.52. I can't remember what isn't a spoiler and what isn't, so I'm not gonna tell you the plot, but I'm just gonna say I didn't feel, I think if you're handling the themes that this book is gonna, is handling, I didn't feel like they were handled well, and I never felt like the discussions of those issues got past the first sentence. Do you know what I mean? They got, they, they said the initial, it was like if you're writing an essay, it said the first, first line of the essay and never got past that for me. But I am interested in reading what Ashley Wynn said. I've heard really good things about Midnight is the Darkest Hour that's come out. I'm gonna keep giving her a go because I gave In My Dreams a whole knife five stars, but The Last Housewife wasn't it for me, but I've read it, so who cares? And it is The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentile. I'm really hoping that I unwrap this. I've read The Woman in, what is happening? I have read The Woman in the Library. We've read 11. The Woman in the Library I enjoyed, but I went into it with such high expectations. It's like, a murder mystery than a murder mystery. There's like an author who's writing a book and is getting letters from their friend about the book, but then you're reading the book that they're writing as well. And it's locked room and I just didn't feel like it fully went there for me. I don't know, I think if I like a locked room, I like the mystery and the, like, the locations of the mystery to stay a little bit constrained. Like I like it if it's at a house for us to stay at the house. Or like, I don't know, I just think the synopsis made me think this book was gonna be done in a different way than it was, and it just didn't fully succeed for me. Next we have series to finish, baby. We Fuck off. I don't think I'm gonna have done well. <laughs> series to finish. First we have Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. This would finish off the King of Scars duology. I've read Rule of Wolves. What is happening? I've read 12. One more and I've read over half. I still have only read, not read two. That's gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna deteriorate. I read one of rules. I'm glad, I'm just gonna say I'm glad I finished that duology off. It was an easy one to tick off. Yeah! God, what's going on guys? Where's the cheers, man? Listen, I love you, Lee, but like, the Grishaverse is getting a little bit big for its boots. I'm glad you're doing Ninth House. I'm glad you've got this new standalone coming out next year. Cause I think the Grishaverse, I know it's your money maker, but like it's getting a little bit. And this book, and particularly astrology, mixes Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows in a way that like hasn't been mixed before, and I'm not, I'm not into it because I wanted Six of Crows three to just be Six of Crows. I don't like Shadow and Bone. I don't like Shadow and Bone universe. I don't want the mixing. Get out of here. I just like the crows. So. Moving on. And then another duology that I want to finish is um, the start, the Song of Race and Ruin one, where the one I have to read is a Psalm of Storms and Silence. The oh, I haven't read a Psalm of Storms and Silence. I have not read that. I should have done because I, it's again a duology that I only need to read one more book to finish off. But <laughs> it's long. It's like very chunky. I enjoyed the first book, but I can't remember much about it now. So I, do, I but I own the second book, so I've just got to read it. But yeah, I should have finished that off this year because the longer with any series, the longer you go without reading it, the more you forget. And I feel like I've forgotten a lot about the first book. Actually, no, now that I think about it, there was the game. There was, they needed to kill each other, but didn't want, I don't know, I remember it. I remember it, but yeah, I have not read. A Psalm of Storms and Silence. The, what is this series called? The Themis Files series. I have to read Only Human by Sylvain Nouvelle. I finished The Themis Files. I read Only Human. Guys, I read 13. Oh my God, I'm so proud of myself. Watch me not read anymore. <laughs> I love the first two in The Themis Files. And this third one for me, it didn't need to happen. It didn't need to be a book. The first two could almost be like a self-contained series. I don't think that this third book added anything. I don't think it needed to happen. And I, it would have been better as a novella. It was too long. It wasn't enough to bulk out the book. It was like, he thought, okay, the series needs to end this way, but then there wasn't enough happening in the book to justify it. Like if it was a novella, it would have been fine, but it was a novel. We have four series that I want to start this year. These are the series, series I really want to start. prioritize. See, I actually think I'm gonna have less luck with this than series to finish because I really, try not to start a series. So we'll see how it goes. I feel like you guys are gonna yell at me. <laughs> that I still haven't read this, Finley Donovan. We're oh. reading it this year, I promise you. I have read Finley Donovan and I really enjoyed it. I loved Finley Donovan, it was so much fun. I really enjoyed Finley Donovan. I'm excited to continue on in the series. Um, Yeah, it's definitely my kind of book. You guys knew it'd be my kind of book. And you yelled at me for like years and I didn't read it. <laughs> 
So I'm glad. Yeah, we love you, Finley. Then we have the Veronica Speedwell series. This one is The Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. I haven't started the Veronica Speedwell series, guys. I oh no, this has now gone downhill. I haven't started it and I know you guys keep yelling at me, but it's so long. It's like a seven, eight, nine, ten book series. Why? Why? Why is it this long? No, I really want to. It's now wrapped up because now A Curious Beginning is one of the oldest books on my TBR. I've owned it for so long. I've owned it for so long and I haven't read. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, you got, uh, you guys, I know. You all told me so many times to start it. I know I need to. I know. I know I need to, but I, I have not started it. This is, I, I, if I would, <laughs> I'm not going to put this on my 2024 TBR, but I'm certain I'm going to read it in 2024. One that is wrapped up is Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. This is witchy vibes. It's I start, I've read that. Oh my god, I've read 15. What is going on? What is going on? And I loved it. I loved how much it's all covered. <gasps> and I owned the second one already. Oh my god. I could cry. I could cry. Why am I doing so well? <laughs> I'm so happy. I think this might be the best I've ever done at one of these. What is going on? No, I've read Hermeshi's Royal Coven and I loved it. I think it's so witchy. Ah! I love, I, if you're going to say you're giving me witches, you've got to give me witches. I always, there's so many witchy books I get burned by. We've seen it time and time again, but Hermeshi's Royal Coven did not burn me. And then the last one is a cozy mystery series that I'd really love to start. And that is Murder Before Evensong by Richard Coles. This oh. That's sad, I haven't started the Murder for Even Song series. I own the second one as well. Oh, you know, here's the thing, it would be easy for me to read these, but I don't want to add to the series total. <laughs> I gotta finish the fucking series fast. Yeah, I need to start the series because I have the first two books. I haven't had the best things about them. They are quite lowly rated on Goodreads. They're like within my five lowest rated books. That's the first one is at least. But I, as long as I go into it with the right expectations, I'm not expecting it to be Thursday Murder Club. You you will never be Richard Osman, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but as long as I go into it just for fun, cozy mystery, I think I can have a good time with it. But we shall see. We have three more, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, three we have more. three more. And these are all non-fiction oh, yeah, I would right. like to read. I do oh. want to try and prioritise. Watch me read none of these. Fiction, fitting non-fiction into vlogs. I want to read non-fiction. I want to fit non-fiction books, but I don't do it. I don't do it. Time and time again, I don't do it. That's so upsetting. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna have read any of these. I don't think. I think I have read more nonfiction this year, but I just don't. I just don't feel like I'm gonna have read them. Is Witch in defense of witches, why <gasps> women are still on trial. But I haven't read it. We can probably speed run these, because then we'll just talk about them in one go. Let's just find out what these three nonfiction books are. It is Know My Name <laughs> by Chanel Miller. I. Oh, you guys are gonna be so mad at me for that one. I haven't read Know My Name. Last one. I won't have read it. I won't have read it. It is Harlots, Whores and Hackabouts by Kate Lister, A History of Sex for Sale. Oh, I haven't read it. <laughs> I just knew my bones. See, as soon as that nonfiction category came up, I knew, I knew. <laughs> Okay, so we had In Defense of Witches, which I still really, really want to read. It's one of the ones that I look at the most and think oh, I would like to read you. Same, I mean, know my name. I just don't know when I'm going to be ready to read that, but I am going to have to read that at some point because I know everyone who's read that has given that five stars and says how emotional and heavy hitting and impactful and incredibly written it is. So I still really want to read it. I think I've just been a bit intimidated by it. And then Harlots, Whores and Hackabouts. When did I get that? I thought I got that last year for my birthday. <gasps> I must have got that the year before for my birthday. I've owned that book nearly two years. When did I make this video? 17th January, no, I got that the year before. I thought I got that this year for my birthday. I got it even I've owned that nearly two years. Wow. I thought that was like a new book on the TBR. Jesus. <laughs> it's a big book, right? It's like very, it's a bit more of like a textbooky thing. And I really want to read it because I think it's an important topic to learn about, but I have not read it. So we read 15 books of my 2023 and did not read eight. I, I think that's pretty good, guys. I am so proud of her, I could cry. I'm happy with that. I read almost double the amount that I had not read. That, in my, in my mind, it's a success. <laughs> Let's all just applaud, everyone. It's a success. <laughs> 
I'm happy with that. Let me know how you think I did. Let me know which of those eight that I haven't read you most think I should get to pretty soon. You're all gonna say no my name. I know you are. I know you are. I know I need to read it. And also love theoretically in the last word some of my most anticipated 2023 releases I have not got round to. So they're they're pretty high up for me as well. But um yeah, let me know how you think I did. I think I did pretty fucking good, guys. I think this is like this is the best I've ever done. When I react to my 24 books read before I turn 24 in January, don't I don't know the numbers, but don't expect anything close to this. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Oh, wait, no. I did, did I do my maths wrong? I did my maths wrong. Half of 23 is 11 and a half, not 12 and a half. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's 11 and a half. Okay. I'm just going to acknowledge that now. <laughs> Should have been 11 and a half, yeah. Anyways, it doesn't matter because I read 15. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know any books that are on your 2023 TBR that you have or haven't read, if you made one of those. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.